As we approach now week six of Russia's war in Ukraine, a potential breakthrough and peace negotiations between Ukraine and Russia. The Russian deputy defense minister says Russia plans to decrease its military activity in parts of Ukraine. This reduction is, he says, to increase mutual trust for future negotiations toward a peace deal. Joining us now is Congressman Daryl Issa, who is a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee as well as the House Judiciary Committee. Congressman, thanks for being with us. And given the uh, recent statements from the Russian Defense Ministry, where do things stand right now with this conflict? Well, I think for President Zelensky, you've really got to remember that Reagan axiom, trust but verify. The Russians have previously made similar announcements, and each time it's been untrue. Uh, so whether they're reducing in one area to increase in another uh, or they're genuinely at a point of having some meaningful negotiations remains to be seen. Hey, Congressman Issa, uh, something that got a lot of attention was uh, President Biden's speech over the weekend in Poland in which he uh, said, in fact, that uh, Putin cannot remain in power. He later clarified that and said he's not, that's not a matter of policy that the United States have for regime change, but this, uh, of course, all, caused all kinds of, of, of issues around the world. What did you make of what he said and how he kind of explained uh, his comments? Well, the White House walked back what were very regrettable words uh, because clearly it would be inappropriate to call for regime change at this point unless you're willing to back it up and the president isn't. Uh, but when they corrected or restated, uh, they did give us a meaningful statement and one that I think we should go with, which is the United States needs to take affirmative steps to lower the power of Putin. He's going to be there in all likelihood for a while. So uh, reinvesting in, in NATO in a meaningful way, protecting countries that are uh, endangered, that are outside of NATO, but in Europe. And lastly, uh, changing our energy policy in a way that we can be an alternative to Russia and the dependence that so many Europeans have on them for energy. All of those things would lower his, quote, power. And I think that would be consistent with what the White House now says they want to do. Speaking to that dependency on en energy, Congressman Issa, let's talk about the pain at the pump, one of the ripple effects of this war affecting Americans, and especially folks in your state. We just got back from California. We looked at those $7 a gallon uh, signs that is uh, fairly uh, devastating to a lot of people in terms of uh, just their weekly expenditure. So are you in support of your state and other states uh, with that spending gas tax relief? Could propose $11 billion worth of relief uh, do you think that is the way forward? Is that, is that the action we need to be taking? It certainly would help. We have the highest taxes in the country and not the best roads. So uh, and we have a $42 billion surplus right now. So suspending uh, that half a dollar or so would be helpful to those who depend on, on that fuel to get to and from work. However, uh, California has three reasons that the price is high, none of which are Putin. One is that tax, one is our specialized formulas that only California has that adds nearly a dollar to our fuel. And lastly, uh, the fact that instead of being a net producer, which we were, we were the third largest producing state, uh, there's been a war against producing in California. And so the people of Bakersfield would love to be producing more oil uh, to make our prices go down. Uh, Congressman, we have you here. We want to also ask about what we saw. I'm sure you watched pretty closely the uh, confirmation hearings for Judge Katanji Brown Jackson. Um, we, we've seen a lot of, uh, of hearings over the years, and certainly you've seen a lot uh, there as well. Um, how, what did you think about the tone and um, what came out of those confirmation hearings as we watched essentially history? Well, I won't say that they were the best hearings I ever heard, but they certainly weren't the worst. We, uh, we had real questions about real decisions uh, and, and real uh, activities, but let's be candid. Uh, we knew from the start that she was going to be confirmed. There were a number of people who had previously voted for her with the same record that was being questioned. Uh, so at the end of the day, I think we have to be candid. Uh, elections have consequences. This president gets to pick uh, a very liberal uh, judge to replace, quite candidly, a liberal judge, justice that's retiring. Uh, and so, you know, I would hope in the future we, we take that more into consideration, ask the questions that have not been asked of a judge who's previously been elevated. And I think that would improve even further uh, the, the decorum of the Senate that was lost in the previous couple of uh, hearings. Oh, Congressman Issa, uh, we appreciate you taking the time with us uh, as always, and we will see you down the road, all right? Thank you. All right.
Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.